Hello friends, this video on plant growth and development part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will see how does this process of photoperiodicity takes place. What magic is there inside uh, different plants that they flower in different uh, duration of light exposure or you can say that they flower in different seasons. Okay, so now there are a set of complexes which are present inside many plants which are responsible for this phenomenon of photoperiodicity and this set of complexes are called phytochromes. Phyto means plant, chromes means a chemical substance, some chemicals. So phytochromes. Now what is their job? Their job is to absorb light to regulate flowering. So they are the ones who are responsible for absorbing light. So now these complexes, they are, if you look at their structures, they are protein structures. Now, you know, right, proteins, they exist in so many forms. So they are, these are also complex protein structures. They exist in two forms and they are the photoreceptors. Photo that is light, receptor, somebody who is receiving light. So they are the ones, these structures receive light. Now they exist in two forms. What are those two forms? One is PR and the other one is PFR. So P represents phytochrome, R represents red light and here also P represents phytochrome and FR represents far red light. So this means that there are there is one form of phytochrome which absorbs the red light of the spectrum. So when you think of the spectrum, this is the red light of the spectrum, right? So PR complexes absorb the red light of the spectrum and PFR absorbs the far red light of the spectrum. That is the other end of the spectrum. Right? So these are the two forms. Now one interesting thing is that these two forms are interconvertible. That means PR can be converted into PFR. Again PFR gets converted to PR. So that is one interesting thing. Now the question is, okay, we all understood that okay, there are some protein structures called phytochromes. They absorb light. They exist in two forms, PR, PFR. But how does it affect flowering? Okay. Let us try to understand that also. Now, as I said, they are interconvertible. Now, when PR gets converted to PFR, so PR gets converted into PFR in the daylight. Now, whenever I say the red light during the day, red light is more, you agree, right? The red region of the spectrum, that will be more during daylight, correct? So during daylight, PR gets converted into PFR and PFR gets converted into PR during the night time. Clear? Why? Because during daylight there is more of red light and this PR is good at absorbing red light. So it will absorb red light and it gets converted into PFR. Now this PFR is good at absorbing far red light. That is the bluish light and all. So that is more available at night. So it will absorb the far red light during night and will get converted into PR. And this process continues. So this is the key concept here. So if you understand this, you will be able to understand how this phytochromes affect flowering in plants. So I hope this is clear. Okay. So now let us see how these phytochromes will affect flowering in plants. So let us first talk about the short day plants. Now what happens in short day plants? As I said before, in short day plants, they need shorter days and they need longer nights. Correct? Okay. Now, PFR is the one which actually affects flowering. This form, PFR. In case of short day plants, PFR inhibits flowering. So, it doesn't let flowering to happen. Please remember this. In short day plants, PFR, this component, it does not allow flowering to happen. So, in this case, we can say lesser the PFR better is the flowering 
correct because it is inversely proportional if there is more pfr it will not allow flowering to happen so there will be no no flowering so if the short day plants want to flower they should have very less minimum pfr or they should not have any pfr at all right now in case of short day plants they need short day they need short day and long nights that is the requirement of short day plants now let us see how the conversion happens in this case now let us suppose pr pr will get converted into pfr this happens during day and in for such plants the days are shorter so when you have a short day what will happen pr will get converted into pfr but since the duration of the day is short so less pfr will be formed because it it does not get much time for the conversion so the duration is lesser but what happens during the night this less amount of pfr will get converted into pr and this time the nights are really long so the nights are long so there is lot of time for the conversion so what happens is since the amount of pfr is less and the duration of night is very long so all the pfr is able to get converted into pr so after one complete day that is one day and when we say one day or you mean 24 hours i we mean the daylight plus the night time so after one such complete day what happens you have more of pf pr right because initially you had some pr since the day was short not all of them could get converted to pfr some of it got converted to pfr so the amount of pfr was anyways less now the nights are long so there is lot of time for this pfr to get converted to pr so whatever less amount of pfr was there it all got converted to pr correct so at the end of both these conversions what are you left with you already were, were left with some pr here now you also get so much of pr so you have more pr and almost no pfr so since no pfr hence flowering so therefore the flowering happens only when the days are short and the nights are long now you might uh, think that okay what would have happened if the days were longer so in that case the pfr would have been more and in that case if the nights were shorter so not all the pfrs would have been able to convert back so you would have been left with some pfr and there would have inhibited flowering so there would have been no flowering clear so this is the concept behind the short day plants why they need short days and long nights for flowering now in a very similar way we can understand the flowering in case of long day plants as well i think you can do it yourself you can explain it to yourself based on whatever i spoke about short day plants uh, but anyways i'll explain it to you in case of long day plants pfr promotes flowering so that is the difference between short day and long day plants in this case pfr more the pfr more is the flowering so more pfr more flowering so now the relation is opposite in case of long day plants now when you have long days in case of these plants you have long days and short nights correct so now for the conversion you have some pfr and you have long days so over the long day all this pfr will be able to get converted to pf pfr so now you have more pfr because all the pr got converted to pfr so now this pfr will get a very short night not too much of time to get converted to pr so in this short duration not all pfr will be able to convert back to pr so you will be left back with some pfr so at the end of this entire day you are left with more pfr and since you have more pfr pfr promotes flowering so more pfr therefore flowering takes place simple right the logic is quite simple so these are certain interesting facts which you know that why different plants flower in different seasons okay so with this i think we have discussed this topic on photoperiodism thank you
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.